Ayan. So, good morning po sa inyong lahat. And we are very sorry for some technical difficulties. No, uh, Unfortunately, hindi natin kayang mapakita yung PowerPoint for uh, today's presentation. So, we'll just be posting the link. Po, uh, ipipaste yung link dyan sa my comment section. No, mismong PowerPoint na gagamitin po natin. And uh, habang we're on live, no, pwede po natin siyang tingnan. Okay po? So, let's start. Again, magandang umaga, no? Uh, sundan po natin yung link. I am Maribel Kapitle. You can call me Bell for short. I am the Student Discipline Coordinator of Senior High School Department of Colegio de San Juan de Letran. So, ngayong umaga, no, kahit wala tayong uh, PowerPoint ngayon, no? I, I'd like to talk to you about a lot of things, no? Especially on uh, classroom management and how do we involve our parents in an online learning environment. Thus, the title of the presentation is Reconfigure and Renew Classroom Management Involving Parents in an Online Learning Environment. So, napakadami nating uh, mga concerns, lalo na ngayon that we are currently uh, in this pandemic. There are a lot of challenges and struggles that we encounter every day as educators. Ano po, especially on our planning. Now, uh, nakalive naman tayo and then we have our comment section. Uh, gusto ko kayong tanungin kung kumusta ba kayo? No? Kumusta kayo? Okay pa ba kayo? Are you uh, still financially stable, mentally stable, physically stable? No? And kaya pa ba natin? Now, to give you a flow of discussion, in this morning's uh, webinar. First, we will be talking about the expectations you know, that our students have and also our expectations to our students. Also, second thing that we have for our discussion is to discuss on student policy expansion and parents' involvement. How do we involve our parents in having extended policies in the now normal? And of course, what are our best practices as advisors, subject teachers, that we can actually give to our parents and students? Okay, so question. Ano yung mga biggest adjustment na na-experience natin to prepare ourselves for this academic year? Again, you have there your, your chat box. Pwede kayong mag-comment dyan or just think. No? Ano yung mga biggest experiences na na-encounter natin ngayong school year? No? Hindi natin kasi pwedeng sabihin na ang mga educators ay nasa comfort lang ng mga bahay nila. No? Kasi kumbaga during the, the months, na naka-quarantine tayo or during months na nasa loob tayo ng mga bahay natin, for those several months, struggling ang mga teachers. Why? Kasi kailangan nating mag-prepare ng mga bagay-bagay na bago sa atin. Ano po? So now, we'll try to work on that. Tingnan natin kung ano pa ba yung mga bagay na kaya pa nating may adjust. Mga bagay na kaya pa nating makapag-improve. No? So, what are the expectations of our students to us? No? Again, sundan lang po natin yung a PowerPoint presentation sa link po na nakapost dyan. First, ina-expect ng mga estudyante natin that we understand that not all homes are the same. And sometimes, it's just too difficult to find a working space. However, educators expect that students look for a more convenient space where there are no distractions. On the other side, yung mga estudyante natin, they expect that their professors give them feedback right away whenever they lack something. And then the teachers expect their students to provide time for thorough research and accomplishing the tasks. Next, our students expect teachers that to know that not all students receive support from their parents during an online class. However, yung mga teachers natin or the teachers, they expect that the parents encourage the students or help the students and guide them on some tasks. Our students expect us teachers to realize that we cannot just that they cannot just always open their cameras all the time as there is too much happening around them. However, for some educators, they expect that students open cameras to receive extra points. 
and last of the many expectations no ng mga estudyante natin sa atin is that you're expecting that we at least extend deadlines or be more understanding during the submissions however for teachers we expect our students to meet deadlines so we can follow the course timeline for the subject napakadami nating expectations sa mga teachers natin and somehow we also have expectations no to our students napakadami now how do we reconcile these clashing ideas sa panahon that we are confronted with these kinds of dilemma no? so let me start by mentioning our handbook paano tayo magma-manage ng classroom natin First, our student handbook sa mga institutions natin, ayan yung parang pamphlet or at least a, 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 a handbook na kayang dalhin ng mga bata everywhere they go. Or kapag they want to remind themselves of the different policies no yung institution nila ay meron, they just have to open and browse. However, no we have the student handbook sa mga institutions lang natin, but we don't yet have no policies or extended policies for online classes why first our student handbook contains only the protocols on how to investigate offenses itong mga offenses na to ay offenses na nangyayari sa mismong classrooms natin physical setup second our handbook contains offenses in the context of our physical learning environment and the physical learning environment actually includes our classroom our canteen libraries laboratories our hallways our comfort rooms all these places are where usually minor to major offenses occur last our student handbook actually has a signature of both our parents and students unfortunately what will happen if that handbook no longer serves its purpose no? anong ibig kong sabihin yung handbook natin during face to face no face to face encounters no longer gives protocols on how to investigate offenses in uh, the online learning platforms what if the handbook no longer contains offenses in the context of physical learning environment or online learning environment and what if we can no longer ask our parents to affix their signature or acknowledge the receipt of the offenses that they actually understood so anong gagawin natin what do we do no? this now uh, this is where expanded policy kicks in anong gagawin natin for the expanded policy no first sa expanded policy natin we need to add or provide protocols on how to investigate offenses via online. So pag sinabi nating via online, aside from the student handbook that we have existing in our institutions, kailangan meron tayong expanded policy for online offenses. Next, our handbook or our expanded policy must contain offenses in the context of the online learning environment. So pag sinabi natin na online learning environment, ano-ano to? Ito, ito yung mga platforms natin or online platforms like Google Meet, we have the Zoom, we have Facebook, uh, streams or group chats, etc. There are a lot of platforms na kung saan pwedeng mag-incur ng offenses ang mga estudyante natin unknowingly. No? Also, sa expanded policy natin, or just in case na wala pa kayong expanded policy in your institutions, no? hindi pa naman late kasi sa, sa August 24th pa naman tayo magsa-start uh, for public schools. They will be opening ng kanilang classes for us in the private institutions, 17th kami of the August. No? So, marami, meron pa tayong kahit a uh, counting time to think about the expanded policy next no may acknowledgement yung expanded policy natin and later on we will try to talk about how to pitch these kinds of expanded policies so may signature well paano natin gagawin na ma-acknowledge ng mga magulang yung mga ganitong bagay no may e-signature tayo Meron tayong Google Forms na pwede na lang itik ng mga magulang na yes or no. And of course, 
we also have our mobile applications. Lalo na kapag ang mga department ninyo ay merong existing mobile apps. Also, I'd like to let you know about this one, no? Kahit meron tayong, kahit pinag-uusapan natin yung expanded policy na pwede nating ilagay or idugtong sa ating revised handbook, what's very important here is that we must not impose school rules in someone else's home. Again, we must not impose school rules in someone else's home. Bakit hindi tama na ang mga teachers, educators, or administrators would impose yung mga school rules na meron lang or nakikita lang natin or na-experience natin sa four corners of the classroom? Bakit hindi natin siya dapat dalhin? Anong ibig kong sabihin? I'll give you an example. Meron pong nakalagay dyan sa PowerPoint natin. First, as an educator or a teacher, you ask your students to get rid of their pets. Ayan. Siguro may naririnig kayong tumatahol or tumitilaw or what. So, ano po yung mga bagay na hindi natin dapat pinipenalize yung mga estudyante natin? Or things na dapat na hindi natin sila dapat binibigyan ng demerit. We ask students to get rid of their pets. No? Maingay. No? Tanggalin yung pets. Alisin dyan. And then later on, uh, we, we will also talk about how to include these things that our students love into our day-to-day -day discussions, even if it's just online learning. Next, strictly requiring our students to look for a place that is free from noise. Again, there are some students who are very vulnerable in terms of showing their homes or households to their classmates or to their teachers. May mga bata na naiilang no, pag nag-open sila ng camera and Instead of requiring them, let us encourage them. I attended a flagship a program at Miriam College uh, last 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And in the program, we were taught to use restorative communication to our students. No? Paano yung restorative communication? Kakausapin natin yung mga bata in ways na positive ang atake. So instead of, uh, I require you to do this, you have to do this, you tell the students that you encourage them. And then tell them, ano ba yung mga bagay na pwede nilang makuha uh, no, that, that will be very beneficial on their learning. And somehow, they will abide with, with such rules. Ano po? Next, ano po yung mga bagay na hindi natin dapat pinipenalize ang mga estudyante natin? No? Penalizing the students for not being able to attend online classes. Tanong, Bel, paano yun? Hindi natin sila ipipenalize sa hindi naman sila na-attend ng online class. So, anong gagawin natin sa mga estudyante na very stubborn, na tamad, no? Mind you, teachers, educators, administrators, no? It's very important to ask questions rather than assume. So, pag sinabi nating not assume but ask questions, we ask the students what went wrong. Anong nangyari? Bakit hindi ka naka-attend sa online class? May problema ka ba? Or yung time ba ng online class ko ay hindi akma sa, sa time mo? Or wala bang panload? Baka naman nakadata lang ang bagets or ang student natin, no? In our kolehiyo sa school na pinapasukan ko, we have what we call consultation hours. Itong consultation hours namin ay very flexible kung saan ang mga estudyante pwede silang magsabi na, Ma'am, di ba hindi ako maka-attend sa online class na ito? Or baka pwede po ba akong pumasok po dito sa classroom po ninyo sa ganito pong time? So we let our students have those kinds of uh, uh, things na pwede nilang pagpilian. No? Again, let us not penalize their, the students for not attending their online classes. Let's give benefit of the doubt. Baka hindi sila naka-attend for some reasons na nahihiya silang erase sa'yo. Next, no? giving extra points to students who can open their cameras during synchronous sessions. I've always seen teachers, uh, sometimes via Facebook, no? mga teachers na nagpo-post Ito yung pinakauna nilang sinasabi kapag start ng online class nila or mga set of rules nila. Ang laging nakauna ay, uh, for students na mag-open ng cameras, you will be given extra points. Again, it's just so difficult for students to open their cameras if there is too much going on around them. Okay? So again, ito yung mga bagay na hindi natin kontrolado. Ito yung mga bagay na hindi natin ibibigyan ng offense sa mga bata kasi 
hindi rin nila kontrolado yung nangyari sa kanilang learning environment. So, ano yung mga bagay na dapat mas bigyan natin ng attention instead of these things? And what are the examples of violations or offenses that we could add to our expanded policy para maging safe ang mga estudyante natin from the harms of uh, cyber or uh, cyber space offenses, media, and this is also one way to protect our teachers. So what are those? Again, pakisundan po ako, nandyan po sa PowerPoint. What are some minor violations we could add? First, wearing of indecent clothes while attending the online classes. So, yung pagsusuot ng uh, hindi tama, no? Minsan sa mga estudyante, baka hindi nila napapansin, may naka-open na buttons. This is also the same for teachers, no? For some for some institutions, ang ginawa nila, uh, nagkaroon sila ng uh, parang mandate to ask the students to wear their uniforms. Depende yan, to each his own. Nakadepende kung... Uh, Kung gusto mong i-require ang mga estudyante mo to wear their uniforms. no? Pero uh, in our institution, we ask our students to come to online class na comfortable sila sa suot nila, but the clothes must be decent enough for attending online classes. no? Next, using the microphone feature, camera or chat without prior permission from the teacher. Again, let's give benefit of the doubt. Baka naman ang mga estudyante natin, bago pa lang sila sa GoToMeeting or Google Meet, bago pa lang sila sa Zoom, hindi nila alam. Kahit nga tayo mga professionals, just like this, we are having some technical difficulties. So let's give them a uh, benefit of the doubt. Let us cut them some slack. No? Intindihin natin. Pero what if, Bell, paano pag paulit-ulit ng ginagawa? No? Siyempre, ibang usapan na yan. No, those kinds of violations could lead to major offenses and consequences. Ipapaintindi natin yan ngayon sa mga bata kung ano yung magiging uh, aftermath ng paulit-ulit na ginagawa nilang ganito. At, at least, at least no, they know na we have existing policies like this in our institutions. Next, playing games, not unless uh, it's included in the lesson. Also, the use of caps lock on as it can be considered as yelling. It may be a simple netiquette pero sobrang halaga niya in terms of discussion or just pitching your suggestions. What else? Ano pa yung pwede nating makonsider? Ito, guys, ito po teachers pala ay mga examples lang ng mga pwede nating i-add as minor violations sa ating uh, extended policy. Just in case na magpupush through tayo sa pag a ng mga extended policies in this now normal. Another, posting of irrelevant links, comments, thoughts, or pictures that are not in the topic during online class. Very rampant ito. Kung uh, late na kayong nag, ano, natapos for the school year, panigurado na abutan nyo pa na mag-online class. Ano po? So, madami tayong mga, mga moments or experiences where students are very happy kasi bago lang sila sa paggamit ng chat box. No? Bago lang sila sa paggamit ng chat box. At uh, nag-spam, nagta-type ng kung ano-ano, nagpo-post ng link ng kung ano-ano. So, it's better to... Remind our students not to post irrelevant links during classes. Itong mga policies na to, no, instead of giving uh, stress to the teachers and to those students at ma-disrupt ang classes, at least early on, alam na nila na hindi nila to dapat ginagawa. Next, faking attendance if you will be monitoring your attendance. Further, we now go to major violations. Ano yung mga sample or major violations na pwede nating i-add sa ating expanded policy? O bakit siya importante? Or ano-ano yung mga bagay na pwede nating ilagay? First, when students initiate or create quarrels among classmates, kahit online man yan, kahit sa mga group chats man yan, streams, no, or uh, chat boxes. Next, use of profanity or racial slurs or hindi magagandang salita. No? Uh, sinasabi nila sa mga kaklase nila, even sa teacher, administrators. Also, spreading rumors na hindi naman totoo via online or sharing and posting these things. No? Na wala namang uh, katotohanan or wala namang, uh, wala namang truthfulness no? dun sa mga post nila. Also, inciting students not to attend periods. 
eto yung minsan sinasabi ng mga bata na, mom, nagbibiru lang naman po ako eh. But in the online class, it's different. Kasi lahat ng maririnig mo, lahat ng makikita mo, doon ka mag-hold on eh. Kasi doon lang naman kayo nagkikita-kita. Hindi kayo nagkikita-kita face to face. So, turuan natin yung mga bata natin to be truthful in their words. Kasi pag inciting students not to attend periods, pwede nilang sabihin, oh, wala daw si ma'am. Huwag daw tayong umatin. May sakit daw si ma'am bell. So, these are examples na, examples ng mga offenses na Maliit lang pakinggan, pero pwede siyang mag-cause ng, uh, dis uh, mag-disrupt ng mga classes natin or flow ng discussions natin in our online classes. Next, entering and using the account of another. Kahit may consent ka pa or wala kang consent at ipinagamit or ginamit ang account mo ng isang tao, that person no, uh, pwedeng masanctionan for illegal access. Also, computer-related forgery, plagiarism, oh, kahit maliit man yan, kahit uh, isang paragraph lang yung kinopya mo, let's try to put across the message to our students to try their best no, na ayusin yung kanilang mga seat works, improve, improve their write-ups. Also, what else? Cyberbullying. Ito pong cyberbullying, I am very familiar na sa mga student handbook natin na meron tayo in our institutions, nakaangkla talaga yan. Kasi it's a memorandum, no? Uh, uh, nagmemo nag ang DepEd na kailangan merong separate form for cyberbullying na kailangan pirmahan ng both parent uh, and student. Kailangan may pirma sila that they are acknowledging na hindi dapat sila mag-cyberbully. Oh, aside from this, no, very general kasi to eh. And it, there are a lot of cyberspace offenses the students might incur while they're having their online classes. So let us stress that to them. Also, posting and sharing status online on desecration of religious images in places. Lalo na sa mga Catholic institutions natin. However, no, yung caution lang dito, kahit ipaliwanag natin siya sa mga estudyante or when we explain this to our students, Ipaliwanag din natin na just because we're telling them not to post or share status online ng pag-disrespect or sacrilege sa religious images or uh, places, no? wag natin silang uh, tanggalan ng karapatan to share global matters that really matter. Ayun lang naman, no? yung gusto kong i-put across on this one. Next, obtaining information of the school. Uh, this is what we call cyber espionage. So, ito yung mga bagay na uh, nakukuha ng mga estudyante out of uh, their skills sa sobrang galing nila sa computer systems. Like, say, for example, hindi naman publicly available ang uh, students na hindi dapat bigyan ng good moral certificate once they incur offenses. Pero nahak ng bata, maybe yung system, or nagkaroon siya ng access sa link ipinos niya. So that's considered a major offense. And also, uh, the last one is gross acts of disrespect in words and in deeds via posting. No, I, I, I don't know about you, I but I worked for my research na uh, gamit ng memes no, on how to achieve academic, uh, academic achievement or performance ng mga bata sa klase. And uh, Sa ngayon, no, memes are seen as something negative for some kasi ginagamit siya no, for, for, uh, for uh, trying to ridicule a person, no, ipahiya ang isang tao, may it, be, uh, may it be a classmate or a teacher or an administrator. So isama natin siya sa expanded policy natin na hindi tama na mag-post ng mga bagay to disrespect a person or an, a, a certain entity. Okay? So, ano pong gagawin natin? Since we've already discussed uh, some minor offenses and major offenses na pwedeng magawa ng mga bata natin, no? what happens after we curate our expanded policies for the new normal? Bakit, bakit importante? Anong gagawin natin na sunod? The next thing we have to do is to pitch. No? Anong ipipitch natin? If you are an educator currently watching right now, I encourage you to pitch and suggest no, ano ba yung mga bagay na pwede pa ninyong i-add perspective sa mga core values ng institutions no, kung saan kayo nagkatrabaho. Tingnan natin ano pa ba yung mga pwede nating may add para we keep our students safe 
and our faculty safe from harm sa mga cyber uh, offenses na ito. If you are an administrator, then I hope you pitch also sa mga uh, faculty natin no? kung paano nila gagawa ng paraan, kung paano or ano pa yung mga naiisip nila na pwede nating idagdag for expanded policy. Okay? So we try to pitch. Next, what can we do now to involve our parents and guardians? Ito very crucial kasi uh, questions like, uh, Ma'am, paano pag hindi naman po supportive yung parents? Oh, question, a question like this might arise. No? Anong gagawin natin? So, first, how do we involve our parents and our guardians in our online learning platforms or in our online learning activities? First, and dyan po, meron po tayong format dyan kung gusto nyo pong gayahin. Or if you have other formats in your institutions, then uh, pwede naman. So, we have class directory. Tama po ba? No? Uh, call the parents. Pag, sinabing, pag sinabi kong call the parents, ang ibig ko pong sabihin is call the parents para kumustahin sila. Especially bago mag-start ang school year. Kumustahin nyo sila and then alamin niyo teachers naman tayo eh, magagaling talaga tayong makipag-usap sa mga magulang. That's what I assume. No? Magaling tayong mag-connect sa ibang tao. Let's try to call the parents. Kumustahin, kumusta ang situation nila sa bahay, no? kumustahin kung ano ang relationship ng guardian na binigay ng contact ng bata sa kanya. No? Very important din to kasi for elementary students natin, okay lang. No? Kasi meron talaga, silang, uh, meron, talagang, meron talaga silang class directory at uh, madudouble check agad ng teacher. But for junior high school, senior high school and college, iba ang usapan. Kasi alam ng mga bata kung uh, ano ang dapat hindi ibigay, ano ang dapat ibigay. Lalo na kapag medyo may kakulitan ng estudyante. So, call the parents to double check. Is this number working? Number ba talaga to ng magulang? Call them. No? Huwag nating tatawagan ang mga magulang kapag may offense ang bata. Kasi they will not appreciate it. No? I, I, I've been into uh, different situations in the past. no And... Uh, Parents find it comforting kapag ang mga teachers, especially our advisors, tumatawag kahit wala namang masyadong concern. No? Kakamustahin lang po, papaalala lang po na for this Saturday, meron po tayong conference or meron po tayong meeting or if you want to have consultations. No? Some teachers nga nagiging textmate na yung mga magulang. And this is one good, uh, one good indicator that we are trying our best as teachers. Ano po? So again, we call the parents. Huwag tayong tatawag kapag merong offenses. Tawag po tayo para kumustahin kung kumusta ang learning environment ng mga bata or mga anak natin sa mga, mga households nila. Next, if you can, you can create group chats, streams, links, etc. where parents can communicate. Gawa tayo ng mga group chat. Usong-uso ang mga group chat. No? Let, the, uh, let the parents join sa discussion, no? Para mapag-usapan nila saan na ba sila or ano ba yung mga tips nila from other parents, ano ba yung ginagawa nila, no? Doon sa stream, pwede nilang i-post kung ano yung usually uh, set up nila sa bahay and what others can uh, get from it, especially kung maganda naman yung practice na sinishare po nila. So, let's create group chats or streams where parents can communicate with each other. Pero at the same time, para maiwasan din yung mga unforeseen events, katulad ng uh, nag-away sa group chat, ganyan, please always be present, be available and be there. Be committed kapag gumawa ka ng group chat or uh, streams for the parents. What else? Ask parents to acknowledge receipt of important documents and contracts. And if I mean receipt, kailangan masigurado ninyo na naiintindihan ng mga parents natin yung kontrata na ibinibigay ng eskwelahan sa kanila or documents no i also appreciate seeing a uh, post no na, ng mga ng mga schools talaga na they see to it na kumukuha talaga sila 
ng um, consent sa mga magulang. Consent is a magic word in this time of pandemic. Napaka-importante kasi everything is going online. And asking consent sa mga magulang, especially sa mga bagets natin sa elementary, uh, high school na hindi pa 18 and above, no, napaka-importante to get consent from their parents. So acknowledge receipt of important documents and just like the example a while ago, kung gusto nating mag-pitch ng suggestions sa mga magulang, anong gagawin natin? Uh, just simply ask them to tick the box, yes or no. Kung ayaw naman nila, kung meron silang part sa uh, gusto nyong i-pitch sa kanila in terms of expanded policies for this online learning na academic year, opening ng academic year, then they may suggest maaring merong mga naiisip yung mga stakeholders natin na hindi natin naiisip. So, let us try to involve them uh, in the discussion. Okay? Sobrang halaga po nito. Next, communication to parents and appointment with faculty. Bakit siya very important? no Please tell the parents or involve the parents kapag meron kayong extra time, consultation, uh, consultation time. Itrain nyo pong bigyan ng kaunting schedule yung mga magulang. Tulad nga ng sabi ko kanina, itrain natin silang kumustahin. And from there, they would see na we also value no, talaga the education of uh, their, their children. Katulad ng pag-value nila sa education ng mga anak nila. no Assurances lang naman ang kailangan natin uh, sa panahong ito. So, let us communicate to our parents. Uh, let's have an appointment with them kapag kaya kailangan our advisors who are the front lines sa educational uh, platforms ngayon. Ano? Let's provide the guardians, say for example, a unique Google meeting link a day before the meeting for online appointment. So makita nila na we are ready, handa tayong kausapin sila, hindi yung napilitan lang tayo or hindi yung may offense lang yung bata. O bigyan natin ng bigyan natin ng way yung mga magulang to also connect with us kasi hindi ko alam ha, pero for me kung kung ang ang isang teacher ay may magandang relasyon sa mga magulang or parents ng bata they will be able to have a successful online learning environment no ang connection ng magulang at ng teacher ay very important in this time of uh, pandemic no kailangan nating mag-create ng magandang atmosphere Usually kasi minsan kapag you know, yung mga, mga magulang natin, mahilig silang mag-inquire, mahilig silang magtanong ng mga bagay-bagay. And sometimes uh, we feel na itong mga parents na to ini-interrogate tayo or they do not respect us or for some, no, uh, kine-question nila yung ways natin in teaching. But if we're able to create a, a good atmosphere sa ating mga magulang, then that's the only time na we will get their trust. No, we will get their respect. So, ingatan natin, ingatan natin yung relasyon natin sa mga magulang. And of course, this is very important. I don't know if uh, you are currently following the PowerPoint right now, no? But uh, for slide 28, we have there, involve your parents in your online class activities or during homeroom period. No, paano natin gagawin yun? Eh, hindi naman PTC class activity ang pinag-uusapan at a homeroom period with the advisor. So, I ask you, no, I encourage all of you to include them in simple activities that students will be able to enjoy. Kung makikita nyo po dyan, or if you try to search, if you try to search hashtag flaunt your confidante, hashtag ditch na all moments, and hashtag speech comfort 101, ito yung mga hashtags na pinagamit ko sa mga bata. Uh, last week, nagaroon po ang kolehiyo namin ng dry run activity, and students were asked or encouraged to attend para makita nila kung paano ba yung flow ng schedule nila during an online class. No? And even if it's just a dry run activity, students did the activity talaga. So ano yung activity ko? Ang activity ko kasi I'm teaching speech com, ang sabi ko sa kanila, uh, try to take a picture uh, sa isang tao na very comfortable ka na, na makipag-communicate. No? And to my surprise, hindi friends ang sagot ng mga bata. Ang friends, hindi uh, uh, the friends. So, ano ang sagot ng mga bata? Usually, their parents, mom, dads, siblings. So, you see, sa time na lahat tayo nasa bahay, 
we cannot take away the fact that these students together with their parents are actually enjoying the company you know they're enjoying the company of each other so let's try to use these kinds of moments to include them in our classes para ma appreciate ng mga magulang na uh, we are included we are included in the process activity what else uh, sa module for speech and oral communication uh, for module ng speech and oral communication no? i will be asking the students to have a practice speech so for one to two minutes, they will talk about something that they love. Uh, they can open the ca their cameras if they want. They can bring uh, the pet that they love or maybe some things or hobbies or person that they really like. Pwede nilang isama sa activity and then talk about them for uh, one to two minutes. So yung mga simple, simple things like this, instead of getting rid of uh, what our students really love, we try to give value to it We and make meaning make meaning doon sa mga bagay na gusto ng mga estudyante nating makita in our classrooms. So we could do that. Now, what can parents do? What can parents do? No? So in pitching sa inyong mga stakeholders, especially sa ating mga parents, first is to do a check-in. Kung ikaw ay a parent ng uh, elementary student, check-in. Try to check ano na ba yung mga pinapanood ng anak mo? Ano na ba yung mga sinesearch nila? No? Kung, kung high school naman, still check in. Kumustahin ang araw ng bata? Kumusta ka? Anong ginawa mo ngayong araw? No? Next, remain mindful if students show signs of stress. Ano po yung ibig sabihin ng mindful? No? Encourage yung parents natin na syempre they know, they, they know their children well. No? Alam nila kapag may bumabagabag sa mga bata. Unlike in our face-to-face -face classes, kapag kumunot na ang noon ng mga bata, alam na natin agad that they are struggling with the lesson or keeping up with the lesson. Unfortunately, pagdating natin sa online class, it's just so difficult to know if our students are already stressed. Kaya nga ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na if we have partnered well with our parents, no? madali nila tayong mabibigyan ng uh, konting heads up like ma'am yung anak ko po medyo na stress po ata hindi po ata siya nakakasunod no? so madali nating magawa ng paraan kasi may, minsan may mga estudyante na hindi talaga magsasabi sa teachers kapag meron silang pinagdadaanan or kapag hindi na nila naiintindihan for some siguro they're just embarrassed no some other some students they're very anxious na magsabi no? next be a cyber smart parent. No? Sabihan natin yung mga magulang natin uh, during our consultation hours to be a cyber smart parent. No? I-involve natin sila dun sa policies na meron tayo. Sabihan natin sila kung ano mga, ano mga, mga bagay na dapat alam nila while uh, their, their children are having their online classes. Kung mga ano mga cyber space offenses na pwedeng magawa ng mga anak nila. Next, lean in and lean out. Anong ibig sabihin ng lean in, uh, lean in and lean out? We know exactly when to step back. No? Kahit, kahit we are encouraged as parents to help our children to do things, no? we try to step back a little. Because if we always lean in no? sa mga bagay na ginagawa ng mga estudyante natin and we are overly attached, no? overly participating as to what our students are doing or children are doing, we will strip them from the experience or learning experience na pwede nilang magawa successfully on their own. Last one would be parent impact. Kung ikaw ay parent at nasa bahay ka and you also work from home, try to show a, a good uh, or be a good model. No, sa mga ma, mga anak ninyo or mga mga estudyante natin kasi pag nakita nila na ang mga magulang nila are keeping up with their schedules sa mga work then our students will exactly emulate what they're doing sabi nga di ba ang mga estudyante kinukuha nila yung mga bagay na they believe will be very beneficial for them and to tell you this is a scary time and um this is actually an uncharted territory na hindi natin alam this is scary for our teachers, educators, administrators, scary all the more to our students and uh, to our uh, parents. No, this is a scary time. And what we need right now are reassurances coming from our administrators, coming from each other. No, 
hopefully, hopefully maging okay lahat. And hopefully, we're able to navigate, no? Navigate well for this upcoming year. So, can you just imagine na hindi pa tayo tapos, oh, no? Uh, hindi pa tayo nagsa-start, rather, sa ating academic year, pero sobrang dami ng pinagdaanan ng mga kaguruan for uh, the beginning of the academic year. So, I hope that everybody will be prepared for this uh, uh, academic year. End to end, I'd like to leave you with uh, a particular quote from a teacher in one of my favorite novels, Nicholas Sparks, uh, Every Breath. Ang sabi niya, one of the great things about a leaf is that it reminds you to live as well as you can for as long as you can until it's finally time to let go and allow yourself to drift away with grace. Anong implication sa ating mga educators? May it be face-to-face -face or not, no? kung online class man or not, our students will always be at the center no? ng mga ginagawa natin. And uh, let us try to be their support system para kapag umuki na sila and they're all able to uh, go into their respective uh, respective experiences, no? kung saan man sila mapadpad, we'll be able to drift away with grace. Maayos natin silang iiwanan kasi sigurado tayo na natulungan natin sila at some point. No? Again, uh, at this time, I hope that we're able to reconfigure and somehow renew our policies for the school year. So I thank every one of you who attended and are currently uh, watching this live. And we, again, are very sorry for technical difficulties. If ever you'd like to pitch, you may use the PowerPoint given to you. We have the link there. Or you may contact me if you have questions at uh, maribel.capitle at letran.edu.ph for my email and other social media accounts. So you can also see the references over there. Ayan. So thank you very much. I am now exiting for my sa PowerPoint. So... I believe we can now ask questions if we have questions po. Yeah, so I'm currently waiting for questions. My questions po ba tayo? Ayan. Just in case, no, kung talagang, uh, I don't know, uh, I think there there is a technical problem. But uh, just in case, I have given you some of uh, my accounts, especially my email account. No? If you'd like to ask for some materials or tips or maybe uh, just talk about things you're currently struggling, no? Po, po no? Please uh, utilize the material well yung nakalagay po dyan sa link. And again, I'm giving the consent na pwede nyo siya pong magamit pagdating po natin sa uh, mga respective institutions natin. And hopefully, sana nakatulong po ako sa inyo ngayong umaga. And uh, I'm very sorry that you have to wait for some time bago magsimula itong live natin. Okay, a question from uh, Ma'am Chita Cabanza. What if the student give their access to other student to answer their activity kasi wala silang load? All right, for this case, again, we were very clear, no? Na nakadepende sa mga, nakadepende sa atin kung ano yung ia add natin sa expanded policies. And just in case, we considered adding illegal access to one of our major offenses, then... My answer is, of course, hindi. Kasi they will be having illegal access. Now, the best thing that you can do here is to ask the student involved. No? Sino yung estudyante na walang load? Uh, marami tayong pwedeng uh, gawin. Maybe we, we could connect with the students sa messenger, free data naman sila. No? Ano yung concern nila? 
sa activity. And from there, let's try to find out kung ano yung pwede nating maitulong sa bata. But certainly, when we talk about asking the student or asking another student to access their, their account for us, uh, say for example, I am a student, hindi po yun po pwede. Kasi that's considered illegal access, even if there is a consent. Okay po, I hope I answered the question. Next, from Ma'am Luella Bautista Mupas. What is the best time for parents to step, step in, especially when the students are very shy to open up? Again, tulad ng sabi ko kanina, alam ng mga magulang or mas kilala ng mga magulang ang mga anak nila. I am assuming that one. Since uh, most of our students are very close with their parents. So, kailan silang mag-step in kapag alam na nila na ganun? Mararamdaman nila yon. And once that happens, maybe kung hindi masyadong, uh, kung hindi masyadong close, just in case, ang magulang doon sa estudyante, for formality purposes, pwedeng sabihan yung teacher concerned na, uh, ma'am, uh, medyo nahihiya po yung anak ko, uh, pwede po ba natin siyang uh, i-refer, no? Kung, uh, Yung pag-open up has something to do with some struggles na personal talaga at wala nang kinalaman sa kanyang online learning. We have our guidance counselors to help us. No, pwede tayong mag, uh, magkaroon ng consultation hour with our guidance counselors sa mga respective institutions natin. Required naman yan sa lahat ng schools or institutions. So I believe na uh, naka-standby lang ang ating mga guidance counselors lalo na sa mga panahong ito. So kung ganun po, nahihiyang mag-open up, no? Diretso sa teacher, mag-request sa teacher kung pwedeng magpa-consult ang bata, and then after that kapag umoki na yung consultation with the guidance counselors, try to find uh, improvements, no? Doon sa ginagawa ng bata or attitude ng bata sa sa bahay. No? And then give feedback sa advisors para malaman kung kailangan bang mag-set uli ng uh, new consultation sa ating mga guidance counselors. Next, from Ma'am uh, Shaina Papandayan Laot, uh, can you repeat for me what's the difference between uh, link in and lean out? Ah, Ma'am, it's a uh, lean in and lean out. So pag sinabi natin lean in, ito yung uh, we are overly uh, involved dun sa ginagawa ng bata. Like say for example, sa mga elementary uh, students natin, no? sabi ng teacher, merong example ang teacher or activity na, oh, magtanim kayo. Tapos, uh, tingnan natin yung progress ng tanim ninyo. No? And since you are overly uh, involved dun sa ginagawa ng anak mo, ikaw na yung nagtanim, ikaw na yung gumawa ng lahat. And ang kailangan na lang gawin ng anak mo is to present yung kanyang work. No? So that is leaning in. No? Nag-lean in tayo sa ating mga sa ating mga estudyante or ating mga anak too much. Now we are already uh, stripping away uh, their chance to experience yung mga bagay na they could do successfully on their own. If we say lean out, it means na mag-step back tayo. Bigyan natin ng chance ang mga bata na uh, to learn on their own, to learn independently, ask questions. No, encourage them to ask questions. Hindi yung uh, ikaw yung mag-ask ng questions palagi on the end of of your of your child. So, it's important that you discuss the struggles no ng anak mo sa uh, ng anak mo and then uh i-discuss niya sa iyo. And then from there, pwede tayong humingi ng tulong, no? So that's leaning in and leaning out. Oh, hindi po siya link in and link out. Next, any tips for dealing with difficult parents? This is a nice question. No? Nabanggit natin siya kanina, but working working in the academy and as a student discipline coordinator no, uh, up to this uh, academic year, ang masasabi ko lang sa inyo, ngingiti kayo sa mga magulang. No? Kapag, kapag merong mga chances na uh, everything is already difficult, no? Itry nyo ngitian. Ngumiti muna and always be patient sa mga magulang. No, the magic word again here is being patient as well to uh to our parents. Sabi ko nga, ang mga parents kaya lang siya tinatawag na difficult kasi maybe maybe yung way ng pagkakatanong nila sa atin instead of uh, asking for inquiry, nagiging mukhang interrogation na. And sometimes we do not like that as educators kasi we feel like they're questioning our purpose. Ano po? So what do we do? 
try our best to understand them and try to apply restorative communication. No? Mag-restore tayo ng communication sa mga magulang natin. Kung pagalit nila tayong kausapin, uh, kausapin na natin sila ng mas maayos. So, wag din wag tayong wag tayong pumatol. Ano po? Kasi may, maybe yung mga bagay na nai-experience ng mga magulang natin or yung mga bagay na tinatanong ng mga magulang natin sa atin, no, ay mga bagay na nahihirapan din silang intindihin. Kaya kaya minsan yung mga questions nila would come out as uh, maybe sometimes very angry, no, or disappointed. So, let us try to understand where they're coming from. Next, is it still okay to promote the four core values at home with the parents as their evaluator, ma'am, that will serve as a guide for behavioral reviews? Of course, ay magsislip na ang aking map. Di ko ay yung charger ko. Okay, so is it difficult? Uh, baka bigla akong mamatay, no? Kasi meron, biglang mamatay ang aking connection rather. 7%, but we still have more. So, yes po, of course. As long as these are values that we could inculcate to our students, it will and it will not hurt the existing values that we have in our, uh, in our homes or in their households, then I don't see any problems with inculcating such uh, core values Sa, sa mga bahay ng mga estudyante natin or uh, their parents. Okay? Meron pa po bang tanong? Ayan. So, again, we try to follow up po, no? Tingnan natin kung saan pa tayo pwedeng makatulong. Uh, ganun lang talaga, no? We, we, we have to try our best to communicate properly. No, ang pakikipag-usap ay talagang tool to have successful online experience. No, Bigyan natin yung mga bata ng, uh, if not better, but the best uh, online experience they truly deserve. No, Kung meron man kung meron man tayong nababasa na hindi maganda about teachers, uh, posts, no, uh, from the pages, different videos, let's try to put it aside. Because what's important here is... Uh, to successfully teach our students. Maybe maliit ang maliit ang classroom natin ngayon, no? Very limited. But the impact ng on na on na, ng online learning would be very great once we do it right. No? So this is extremely uh, a challenge for all of us. Na sana we will all be able to overcome. And if ever this thing happens again in the future, we easily know how to go about it. Hey po. So I'm still waiting for more questions and uh, parang wala nang questions na nasisend. Meron pa po ba tayong questions? Ayan. So I truly hope na kahit again nagaroon tayo ng technical difficulty, you guys are able to get at least uh, a thing or two from the discussion. And again, if you have questions in ever uh, if ever you need help sa pag um pag-utilize ng ating expanded policy or pagkakaroon ng expanded policy sa mga schools ninyo, you may ask questions. But I also suggest that you try to ask uh, ask for you know thoughts of your school lawyers sa pagkakaroon po natin ng expanded policy as it will entail a lot of cybercrime offenses, especially for college students na or college department na above 18 na yung mga estudyante natin. Ayan. So mukhang wala na po tayong mga questions. Again, the link uh, ay naka, nakalagay po sa ating comment section. Pwede natin siyang puntahan and uh, I, I believe downloadable ate siya. So madali natin siyang ma-access. Yeah, we'll still wait for some questions.
Okay, so yeah, meron akong go signal. So again, thank you very much for tuning in and uh, maraming salamat sa inyo and I, I wish you uh, luck. God bless all of us sa ating mga kanya-kanyang online classes and hopefully we will see each other in the field when all is already well. Goodbye everybody.